Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm going to be featuring something a little bit different on the channel, and that's my new car. Many of us in RC also are car fanatics, and I love my cars. And my old car was a Kia Optima SX. Great car, never had an issue. It was 10 years old. thought, you know what, 10 years old is a reasonable amount of time to get a new car. And I can tell you, the replacement car for the Optima are these new K5s. And this car is beautiful. I absolutely love this. Now, this is a GT line. So this is not the highest end, the GT model. The SX I had before was the highest end. So this car's not quite as powerful. Um, the GT version of this is 290 horsepower. I think it's a 2.5 liter uh, turbo boosted four cylinder. This is the 1.6 liter turbo engine. It produces 180 horsepower. And this is an all of the base model and then the GT line as well. But the GT line has some extra little um, features and stuff that the base model does and it's much more sporty looking than the base model but i did some modifications to this i got this car about two and a half weeks ago just things i wanted to do to kind of personalize it for myself of course i love this blue and i thought i'd just put some accents and things on the car so i thought i'd show you guys some of the stuff i did to it now, i didn't do anything in the interior but what i did is here on the outside is <clears throat> one of the first things i did was put this black like wind visor type thing that runs from right here it's just held with 3m adhesive it comes in three pieces you can pick that up on amazon so i'll try to link to the stuff that i purchased here some will be amazon some will be ebay and some other places so this just sticks on very simple to apply and it kind of covers up that chrome which is not bad but some people you know complain the chrome sort of looks a little out of place i kind of like the jet black look of this you still got the chrome going around the back. Now, I had the uh, windows tint. I just got that done yesterday. Um, I think it's like 85 in the rear, and I forget what it is in the front. The front's not as dark. You can certainly see through it. You can't in the back. Here in Illinois, you have to be careful. You're not really supposed to have much tint at all in the front, so that's why there's a less tint on the front of the car. So, obviously, the police officers walking up, they can see me inside here for their own safety which is completely understandable you come up to a car with tint like the rear or limo tint or something and then you can't see what the guy's got a gun or something so you obviously you have to uh that's why they do that so that's a couple of things i did there to the windows now i did a few things here let me show you in the back here um i'll try to i think i have a picture of the original one here but there's a you have the gt line branding the key of course the new kia logo there and then a K5, and over here, you've got the GT line uh, logo, uh, the branding, and this is the same, like a silver, and I found this red and black one on eBay, and I really thought that would kind of pop on the blue and kind of stand out, because there's actually another one just like this in my hometown. So I did, uh, I replaced that, so if I had that photo, I'll put up there so you guys can compare this to the original. It's not quite as good a quality, but I think it looks pretty good. And uh, I used some dental floss and a heat gun to take the old one off because you don't want to, of course, scratch the paint. So I put that on. And then I did some stuff to the wheels, as you guys will see. Here. The first thing I did is I got these little blue aluminum Kia valve stem caps. They have various colors, they're like seven or eight dollars on eBay. They actually came from the United States, and it really, I love the way that sort of accents the black wheels. So I really thought that looked pretty cool. And then I got this see, these GT line aluminum like caps that go in like in the middle of the wheel. And I, I'm probably not using the right term, I'm bad about that, but these are just held on with 3M adhesive as well. So. You know, obviously this stuff, if someone stole these, you know, it wasn't super expensive. It was a little more than I would have liked them to be. I think they were over 30 bucks for the set of four. But I really, you know, I do like the, the, you can't see here, but the original had the Kia logo in black with the silver, I believe. And that looked really good. But I thought this blue sort of stands out and gives some originality to my car compared to, you know, another one you might see on the road. So I, I like those. And if one of them falls off, you know, I can order a replacement or I can just, you know, pull them off. They're just adhesive, so some rubbing alcohol or if there's any residue, you can pull those off and you're back to the wheels. You're not going to harm the wheels is what I'm getting at. So, 
that's a couple of things that I did to the wheels along with the windows and now let me uh, I'll pop the hood I want to show you the uh, sort of cold air intake that I put in on this car on the engine so let me uh, pause the video I'll be right back okay guys got the hood popped up here you can see it's obviously new the engine's really clean uh, this is that turbo GDI 1.6 liters so again it doesn't put out the horsepower of my old car but it still is peppy enough and this gives a lot better gas well a lot better my old car I'd get over 30 in the highway this can rate it at 37 I've had over 40 if you're doing mostly highway driving but I don't have many miles on this car yet so engine's still breaking in but it's uh it gets good gas mileage and we know these insane gas prices right now paying well over five dollars a gallon this is very important, especially doing some DoorDash like I've been doing lately. But here's what I did here. This is the cold air intake. And the nice thing about this is you're using mostly the stock intake uh, pipes. This is from Burger Motorsports. I'll link to them. They sell this heat shield and then the uh, the filter that comes in blue. And I think they have red. They have a couple colors and I want a blue to match the car. It's a little pricey. Um, this runs, I think, $157. That's far cry from a, a complete, you know, metal pipe intake kit from AEM, or I think Shark Racing makes some. And those are nice, too. And they look, they look nice, but that's a lot of work putting that in. This is going to work just the same. And I, I still, this, this will pop off. I got this stuck on here so it can still draw cold air in here. And then the colder air can come in and then it can take it. And it does breathe in more air. I don't know if it gives you more horsepower. They say on their website up to eight more wheel horsepower. Uh, it might give you a, a hair, you might, maybe a one or two. I don't know. There's no way I could tell. I couldn't tell you that. Um, but it's. I like the sound of them. It's, it, the engine's a little bit more throatier, a little bit more growl. On um, the four cylinder like this, it's still a little bit wind up noise sounding. I had these on some six cylinder before on my. Uh, my Tib uh, I had one on a Tiburon, which is a, a V6 back in the day, a Tiburon GT 2003. And I had a cold air, that was from Shark Race. And then I had a, a cold air intake from AEM on my Hyundai Genesis Coupe, which is over 300 horsepower that V6. I missed that car. And that was also a manual. This is, of course, an automatic. And that one really, you could tell, it really sounded like a V8 with that on there. But the nice thing about this is you just remove the stock box. You put a couple bolts on here to attach the heat shield where the the uh, original air intake box the filter box went so you know the, the newer one this car the filter media comes in like this but you can um easily put this back and there's just a few bolts down here that i had to use some extensions on the sockets to get down there and tighten them into place but it uses all the stock uh you know bolt patterns and stuff so there's no modifications Technically, I don't know if Kia could, I mean, if some weird thing happened, they could say the intake caused it to try to get out of warranty. If you did something like this, you might be a good idea to actually put the stock box back in before you took it for warranty work, which I probably would do, but there's no harm. This is not going to hurt anything, and it looks cool, too, you know, I, I like, so I'll link to them. They do, AM makes one that comes in, and it's enclosed here, and, and it might probably, I'm sure it's probably a little bit better, because you, you, you can draw the air in, you're not getting heat from the top, but it, um, you know those are probably around three you know four hundred dollars and this is a fret you know probably a third you know at least half the cost so i think this you know the heat shield is important to keep this back the heat back because you can obviously <clears throat> some of these cold air intakes end up being hot air intake because they take a bunch of engine heat in and actually it's counterproductive but i think this one seems to work pretty good so yeah that's the modifications i did on this and i really love this car um Really glad I went with this and not a Seltos or something I was thinking about. Um, it just looks so sharp. It just seems to be better built than my Optima SX. No, the Optima SX was not bad. And this does lack some of the features of the higher end model. Now the 2022 like this has navigation. Uh, my Optima, of course, back then, that was a really high end. Um, and tw this, it was a 2012. You could get it with that. But nowadays, with your smartphones, I use the Android Auto and end up pulling up that when I'm navigating, so I don't use the built-in navigation much. But there are some features this is missing. This does not have a premium sound on this one. Um, I think you have to go up to the EX model or the GT to get that. So the sound is not as good. I'm older now, not that big of a deal, but I would, you know, the older car had the premium uh, Infinity system. I think they're JBL now. 
Um, so a better stereo you can go up to. Um, my old car had real leather seats. This is a pseudo faux leather. It seems nice, but they're not real leather seats. Uh, and my old car had heated and cooled seats, and this does not have that as well. So I do miss that. And I had the power folding mirrors, which is great when you're pulling the garage. You could fold them in by the punch of a button. Now I've got to roll the window down and pop it in so I can get enough room between my car and the family van. So there are some things that's lacking, but it just drives so smooth. It doesn't have that road noise. It's just not as rough as the old car, which I'm sure over the years, it obviously got worse. It was not that bad when I first got it. The suspension was new on that car, but it was that was a great car. And this one just rides better. And this has you know those smart features that I want. You know it won't break if you you know if it's gonna sense a collision. And there is an upgraded version of this GT line that has the adaptive cruise control, which will adjust, I believe, the, the distance between you and a car in front of you or something like that. But this one has two modes on the steering wheel, which will allow you one of them is actually down by your left knee, and if that one is a type of if you cross over the median or off to the lines on the side, you get close, it will obviously beep unless you have your turn signal on, but it will also correct you. So the stream will actually move back and keep you from crossing the line. You can still force it to, but it takes a little effort. Um, but if you have the turn signal on, then it knows you're turning and it won't do that. Um, but it also has another one on the steering wheel you press, and that's a like a full-time steering. It will steer using the front camera, looking at the road, and as long as it's, I believe it's green or something, or why I forget, it will steer for you all the time. And <laughs> you do that, and you have the cruise control on, it will drive down the road, and you can do nothing. Now, I am not saying to do that, and I know at least at times it'll yell at you, hey, get your hands back on the steering wheel, but it will actually do that. And I've tested it with my hands, you know, an inch from the steering wheel, and it's crazy. So it does take some getting used to if you've not driven a newer car that has that. I tell you what, many cars you can get to the point where it's going to be impossible to crash a car. This one doesn't have that ability, but uh, it's, we're not that far away from it's going to take a malfunction or a person turning off the, the driving feature or just an older car for someone to uh, have an accident, which is actually pretty awesome. All right, guys, uh, that wraps up this little different video here for my channel, showing you guys a new car. I'm going to try to do some different things when I can because the RC stuff now just is not getting any views. It's extremely hot out today. That's why I got it in the garage, about 100 degrees. Getting out in this weather, doing an RC review and then posting it and having 70 or 80 views at most in a day. That's hard to get motivated for. There's just too much competition and the toy stuff is just not popular right now, especially with inflation. So... We're doing some different things here at times like this. I hope you guys appreciate it. Still going to do plenty of RC stuff, not abandoning that. So if you're new to the channel, please consider, if I can spit it out, subscribing. While you're at it, also click the bell and be notified every time I upload a new video, you'll know. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.